So a Tennessee judge says, don't be cruel and blocks the auction of Elvis Presley's former home, Graceland. A company claims that Elvis's daughter, Lisa Marie Presley... Riley Q now stands as the proud owner of the Graceland estate. But why did she even come into possession of it? Um, embodying my grandfather, and it was really um, shocking and, and emotional. And uh... Did you ever wonder how one of the most famous families in Hollywood had a falling out? Riley... Elvis Presley's granddaughter revealed everything that happened behind the scenes and never even made it to the media. From her brother taking his own life to months of legal battles, family drama, and tons of speculation surrounding her mother's will. Join us as we uncover every little detail about Riley's life and her struggles with Priscilla Presley. Early life of Elvis Presley the king of rock and roll passed away years before Riley Keough was even born. She may have never met her legendary grandfather, but Riley's ties to Graceland are still very strong. Riley and her mother, Lisa Marie Presley, along with their family, spent many Thanksgivings at the iconic estate. And needless to say, they made countless memories while having the times of their lives. Even after all these years, Elvis is still a name that is known throughout the world, but few people know much about Riley Keough, the heiress to her grandfather's empire. Before we dive into the revelations about Elvis made by Riley, let us first get to know her a little better. Back in 1989, the world got its first glimpse at little Riley Keough on the cover of People magazine. Her mother, Lisa Marie, was only 21 at the time, and she could be seen beaming with joy as she held her newborn baby. It was also a special moment because Riley was Elvis Presley's first grandchild. The magazine paid a staggering $300,000 for those first photos of little Riley taken by the photographer Cesare Bonazza. It took only 10 minutes to snap those photos, but their true value was due to the legacy they represented, as Riley would go on to become the guardian of the Graceland estate. In some ways, it was like history was repeating itself, because back when Lisa Marie was born, her cute baby pictures were also taken with Elvis and Priscilla cuddling her. Riley's mom was the only daughter that Elvis and wife Priscilla had, and her dad was also a musician named Danny Keough. Riley was really close to her mom until she passed away in 2023. Despite having famous parents, Riley just remembers feeling loved. Her parents, Lisa and Danny, met back in 1985 and tied the knot in 1988. A year after their marriage, they had Riley, but things didn't go as perfectly as you would have hoped. Lisa and Danny's marriage didn't last very long. They ended up getting a divorce in 1994, only two years after they welcomed their son, Benjamin. Even though they decided to part ways, Lisa and Danny remained friends and focused on raising their children together. They divided their time between California, Hawaii, and Florida, just to make sure that their kids felt loved and cared for no matter what. They didn't want the children to face the difficulties that come with a divorce. Lisa Marie moved on from Danny pretty quickly, and she has had some well-known relationships over the years. She even married Michael Jackson for a short while, and during those couple of years, Riley got to hang out at the Neverland Ranch. In 2002, Lisa married once again, but this time it was to a famous movie star, Nicolas Cage. This relationship, too, only lasted for around two years. Her fourth marriage was to the musician Michael Lockwood. She became a mother once again and gave birth to twin girls, Harper Vivian Ann Lockwood and Finley Aaron Love Lockwood. The middle names of her twins actually came from Lisa Marie's own family, Elvis Presley's middle name was Aaron, and Priscilla's was Anne. Love was also the middle name of Lisa Marie's grandmother, Gladys Presley. In a 2023 interview, Riley talked about how her childhood felt so different. With her mother going through all those different relationships, it might seem a bit weird from an outsider's point of view, but for her, it was normal. She just got used to all the love from a huge family that she thought of as her own. Riley did admit that it was a little extreme at times, but also said that when you go through those moments yourself, 
it just becomes normal. Back in 2002, Riley stepped onto the red carpet for the very first time. She was seen hand in hand with her mother during the big premiere of Lilo and Stitch. That was only the beginning because after that, the mother-daughter duo kept showing up at all sorts of events together, like Elle's Women in Hollywood and Fashion Week. Usually being born into a famous family means that the spotlight is practically handed over to you. But Lisa Marie did not buy into the philosophy, and she wanted Riley to have her own moment, even if it meant it would be far away from all the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. She made sure that Riley would go on to find her own path in life. Lisa Marie even went on Oprah in 2007 and emphasized how important it was for kids to follow their dreams. Riley remembers how her mother was not hell-bent on all that Hollywood life. She wanted her daughter to have a normal childhood and grow up like any other kid. Lisa Marie didn't want to put the pressure of being a celebrity's child on Riley. Riley's Career Lisa Marie kept things on the down low, and that is something that Riley really appreciates about her mom. She admitted that she didn't even lay eyes on a gossip magazine until she was 15. As Riley grew older, she realized that she wanted to try her hand in the industry. It was in her blood. She was the granddaughter of the legendary Elvis Presley, and even her mother, Lisa Marie, had released three albums in her lifetime. So becoming a singer would have only been natural for her. But that was not the case for Riley, and she instead found her passion in acting. She dabbled a little in modeling and even started making movies with her friends. When Riley was only 15, she appeared in a 2004 ready-to-wear show for Dolce & Gabbana and a 2005 collection for Christian Dior. She was also featured on the United States cover of Vogue in August 2004. Riley appeared on the covers of four magazines in 2005, the Japanese Elle magazine, Korean Vogue, and the French magazines Jalousse and L'Officiel. Given her already impressive portfolio in her teens, Riley would have probably found huge success in modeling, but she decided that it was just not for her. So she started seeking acting roles in movies. Riley even dropped out of high school to follow her dreams, and her mother Lisa Marie was completely okay with her decision. Looking back, Riley admits that it probably wasn't the best idea to leave school, but at that time she was just so eager to get started. At her birth, she was given the name Danielle Riley Cuff, but as she started making her move into the industry in 2010, she stuck with Riley Keough. Her parents could do little to change her mind, especially since she landed her first audition so quickly. When she was kickstarting her acting career, Lisa Marie gave her some serious advice. She warned Riley that she might have to work extra hard to be taken seriously in Hollywood. This would be because of her heritage, and the name Presley might make things even more difficult for her. But being part of the Presley family turned out to be in her favor instead. She later admitted that she was lucky and blessed to have been born a Presley. It takes forever for most people in LA to find an agent, but she was able to snag one in just a week. During an interview in 2022, Riley gave a lot of credit to her mom and said that Lisa Marie had been a huge source of inspiration for her. She grew up watching her mom do her own thing, not caring what anyone else thought. Lisa Marie was someone that Riley truly looked up to. When Riley kicked off her acting career, the first role she got was in a film called The Runaways in 2010. It was based on the 1970s all-girl rock band, and Riley played Marie Curry, the sister to the band's lead singer Cherie Curry. She starred alongside Dakota Fanning, Kristen Stewart, and Tatum O'Neill. In April 2011, Riley starred as the female lead in the drama The Good Doctor with Orlando Bloom and Taraji P. Henson. She portrayed Diane Nixon, a young patient with a kidney infection who is kept ill intentionally. The film wasn't a hit, and it received mixed reviews from the critics. 2012 was a big year for a young Riley. She appeared in several films and managed to catch the eye of several directors and producers. 
In June, Riley joined the cast of Magic Mike, alongside Channing Tatum, Matthew McConaughey, and Alex Pettifer. She played the role of Nora, a young stripper. Then in November, she starred as the protagonist in the werewolf drama Jack and Diane. In the same year, she also co-starred in the independent drama Yellow with Sienna Miller, Luke Wilson, and David Morse. Riley also had a supporting role opposite Milo Ventimiglia in the vampire film Kiss of the Damned. In 2013, Riley was signed as the summer ambassador for the Australian fashion brand Bonds. In October, she co-starred in the music video of Justin Timberlake's song TKO. She played a bitter girlfriend who knocks out Timberlakes and ties him to the back of a pickup truck, dragging him through the desert before throwing him off a cliff. Riley appeared in So Young Kim's short film, Spark and Light, in 2014, and the next year she broke into the big leagues. She played the supporting role of a woman called Capable in Mad Max Fury Road. The movie was a huge hit and it gave Riley the sort of big break that she was looking for. Also in 2015, Riley starred in Dixieland as a woman living in a Mississippi trailer park who finds herself sinking into the world of crime. In January 2016, Riley reunited with So Young Kim and co-starred with Gina Malone in the drama Love Song. The same year, she landed her biggest role to date in the first season of the TV series The Girlfriend Experience. Riley played the role of a law student turned escort and was praised for her performance. She even went on to receive a Golden Globe nomination for it. She then appeared in Andrea Arnold's drama film American Honey with Shia LaBeouf in 2016. Once again, Riley was praised for her role in the movie and received a nomination at the Film Independent Spirit Awards. She also had a role in The Discovery directed by Charlie McDowell in the following year. Riley's next film, We Don't Belong Here, was also released in 2017, where she starred alongside Katherine Keener and Anton Yelchin. She then made an appearance in the horror film It Comes at Night. The movie was directed by Trey Edward Schultz and also featured Joel Edgerton and Christopher Abbott. In August 2017, Riley launched her own production company called Felix Culpa with producer Gina Gamel. The two of them announced plans to adapt three novels which included Sweet Lamb of Heaven, Heartthrob, and The Curse of Beauty. In the same month, Riley also starred in Steven Soderbergh's Logan Lucky. 2018 saw Riley appearing in a number of films including Welcome the Stranger, Hold the Dark, Paterno, The House That Jack Built, and Under the Silver Lake. After these, she starred in the lead role in the psychological horror film The Lodge in 2019 and played the role of a woman raised in a cult. This was considered to be her best ever performance by several critics. Riley then landed a lead role opposite Alicia Vikander in the thriller Earthquake Bird, which was directed by Wash Westmoreland. In January 2020, Riley co-starred as Stefani in the comedy drama Zola, and in September 2020, she appeared in Netflix's psychological thriller, The Devil All the Time. In 2022, Riley co-directed and produced War Pony with Gina Gamel. The movie premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in May and won the Camera Door Award for Best First Feature. Riley has also produced the 2023 film Manodrome as part of her production company. Riley and her singing skills, Elvis Presley's granddaughter had lied about her skills on the mic, and she made that confession when she was set to play the role of the pop star Daisy Jones in Daisy Jones and the Six. She admitted that she wasn't much of a singer before landing the part. At a special event for the Amazon Prime series, Riley shared that she had a moment where she kind of blacked out during one of the meetings for the miniseries. She joked about how she had to pretend that she could sing during auditions. Riley even came out and openly admitted that she never read the book by Taylor Jenkins Reid. The whole series is practically based on it. Even before Daisy Jones and this interview, Riley wasn't exactly known for her singing. She did have some music-related gigs in her past, though. 
One of them was Justin Timberlake's 2013 TKO, but back in 2005, she also made an appearance in one of her mother's music videos for the song, Idiot. Personal Life Riley started dating her co-star, Alex Pettifer. The two of them got close on and off screen while filming Magic Mike, and they went public with their relationship in October 2011, right after they finished filming the movie. Six months later, in March 2012, Riley was spotted with a ring on her finger, and that made people talk. There were rumors that the two of them got engaged, but none of them ever confirmed it. They never got married and decided to go their separate ways in 2013. Years later in 2018, Alex reflected on his time together with Riley. While talking on the Sirius XM show Radio Andy, he admitted that she was the first woman he ever fell in love with at first sight. Riley had moved on, though, and in February 2015, she married the Australian stuntman Ben Smith-Peterson in Napa, California. The couple had met while they were filming Mad Max Fury Road, and they had gotten engaged in 2014. Riley had a daughter with Ben who was born in August 2022. She named her child Tupelo, who had been conceived via surrogate. Despite belonging to one of the most famous families in Hollywood, Riley likes to keep her life very private. Not much is known about her and her husband, but they had some pretty famous friends at their wedding. The co-stars of her very first film had special roles when she was tying the knot with Ben. Dakota Johnson read a poem during the ceremony, and Kristen Stewart was one of Riley's bridesmaids. The challenges in Riley's life. Being part of a renowned family has its perks, but Riley has had her fair share of heartbreaks too. In 2020, the Presley family faced a terrible loss when Riley's brother Benjamin passed away. He had been struggling with mental health issues and tragically took his own life. It was a shattering moment for Riley, her mom Lisa Marie, and the rest of the family. In honor of her brother's memory, Riley decided to get a tattoo. She got his first and middle names inked on her collarbone as a beautiful tribute to her sibling. For Riley, it was a way to keep his spirit close to her heart. After Benjamin's death, Riley decided to move in together with her mom for some time. Lisa Marie needed her daughter's support to get through this tough time, and Riley was more than willing to be there for her grieving mother. Even after she moved back out, Riley made sure to spend time with her mom regularly. She visited her at least two or three times a week. Lisa Marie wanted to be around her daughter all the time, but Riley had to balance her own life as well. Just when they were starting to heal, tragedy struck the Presley family once again. On January 12, 2023, Lisa Marie suffered a cardiac arrest at her home in Calabasas, California. Her heart was restarted after medical professionals administered CPR en route to the West Hills Hospital in Los Angeles. But she died later that day. Her last public appearance had been two earlier at the 80th Golden Globe Awards, which she attended with her mother Priscilla. Hundreds of people attended her public memorial service that was held at Graceland on January 22, 2023. She was buried with her son Benjamin and her father Elvis in the Graceland Meditation Garden. Lisa Marie's death was a shock to Riley because she had only seen her mother recently. It left a void in her heart that can never truly be filled. Despite the sudden tragedy, Riley cherishes the memories that she shared with her mother. To her, Lisa Marie would always be special because she had incredible strength, love, and loyalty. Riley recounts how fierce and loving she was, just like a lioness, and was the best mom anyone could ever ask for. The last Sunday they spent together holds a special place in Riley's heart. They celebrated Elvis's birthday at Formosa Cafe and even had a photo together which was taken by Riley's friend, Georgie Flores. Riley also attended her mother's memorial service at Graceland, but she couldn't bring herself to speak. So her husband, Ben Smith-Peterson, delivered a touching tribute on her behalf as Riley sat in the front row. She said that she was grateful to have spent all the beautiful 33 years of her life. Riley thanked Lisa Marie for showing her that love is the only thing that truly matters in life. She hopes that she can love her daughter the same way that Lisa Marie loves all her children. 
Ben ended Riley's speech by saying that she was a product of her mother's heart and that she hoped that Lisa knew how much she was loved. The Legal Disputes Over Graceland's Legacy After Lisa Marie's passing, Riley and her twin sisters found out that they were going to inherit their grandfather's Graceland estate. However, there was a disagreement between Elvis Presley's wife, Priscilla and Riley, about who should be in charge of the substantial inheritance. To give you some context, let's go back a few years. When Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, passed away in 1977, he was only 42. This meant that his daughter Lisa Marie was only nine years old at the time. Elvis's dad, Vernon Presley, and his grandmother, Minnie Mae Presley, along with Lisa Marie, were supposed to inherit the Graceland estate. But since Lisa was too young, her mother, Priscilla, had to handle things on her daughter's behalf. She did a great job of handling things and turned Graceland into a famous landmark where loads of tourists came in every year to spend their money. When Lisa Marie turned 25, she became the sole custodian of Graceland because her grandparents had passed away. In 2016, Lisa decided to make some changes to her will. She took her mom Priscilla and her former manager Barry Siegel out as co-trustees. In their place, she put her daughter Riley and her son Benjamin in charge of the trust. This included Graceland and a large chunk of Elvis Presley Enterprises. But then Benjamin tragically passed away in 2020. This meant that 31-year-old Riley was the only one in charge of her mom's estate. A few weeks after Lisa Marie died in 2023, Priscilla started to make some noise. She was clearly not happy about the change her daughter made to her will in 2016 and claimed that she didn't even know about it. She also pointed out that the signatures on the will didn't even match Lisa's and that someone had even misspelled Priscilla's name in the papers. Riley and Priscilla's lawyers went back and forth over this issue for weeks until they finally worked things out in May 2023. Riley made a deal with her grandmother, and by August, she was the main person in charge of her mom's estate, including the trusts for her twin sisters, Harper and Finley. Priscilla was left to take care of a trust for her son, Navarone Garibaldi. Also, as part of the deal, Riley agreed to pay Priscilla $1 million and covered another $400,000 in legal fees. She also said that Priscilla was free to collect her stuff from Graceland whenever she wanted to. After everything was sorted out between them, Priscilla spoke up regarding the issue. She said that the family had cleared up all the confusion that followed after Lisa Marie had passed away and made it very clear that she was not going to sue her granddaughter contrary to what some media was claiming. Riley's lawyer also made a statement and told the media that she was happy with how things turned out in the end. Riley, after the tragedies. A few days after Riley officially became the soul in charge of her mother's estate, she talked about life after Lisa Marie's passing. She even discussed her own relationship with her grandmother, Priscilla Presley. Riley said that her family was overwhelmed and somewhat confused after her mom's death. It was as if their whole world had been turned upside down and they were all trying to figure out a way to move forward. But things were not that simple because there were a lot of moving parts involved and they had to be sure of every single detail. She emphasized that they were a close-knit family but at the same time, there were certain business aspects to their relationship. They just had to balance all of their personal and professional affairs to avoid any more bad light in the media. It was important for them as a family to reach a legal agreement about Lisa Marie's will, which included Graceland, the estate Lisa inherited from Elvis. Riley also talked about the fact that even though she never even met her grandfather, she was still deeply moved when she saw Austin Butler portray him in the movie Elvis. She admitted in an interview that she was filled with emotion when watching the film and started crying just five minutes into the movie and couldn't stop till it ended. Riley explained that there was a lot of generational trauma from the time that her grandfather found his success and eventually passed away. She was grateful to the filmmakers for putting so much effort into capturing his true essence in the movie. She said that she trusted the director Baz Luhrmann's vision for the film and appreciated this role in protecting their family image when it came to their portrayal on screen.
When Riley started talking about her relationship with Priscilla, she said that things between them had always been happy and full of joy. Even though there were some trying times after her mother's death, things almost immediately returned to normal. Riley appreciates her grandmother more than anything because of the huge part she played in preserving Elvis Presley's legacy in Graceland. This was something that was close to Priscilla's heart, and Riley was sad to see how her grandmother was portrayed in the media. She clarified that Priscilla's main aim was to cherish and protect Graceland and the Presley family's heritage. After Elvis died, safeguarding his legacy became the main focus for Priscilla. Riley is not swayed by any external factors when it comes to her grandmother and simply sees her as a loving grandmother. She also made it clear that the reports saying that Priscilla would not be buried at Graceland are false. It would be completely unthinkable, because it was her idea to share Graceland with the rest of the world. For Riley, Graceland holds a lot of beautiful memories, but it is also a place of sorrow for her. It is the final resting place for her grandfather, her mother, and her brother. Even after all the heartbreak and difficulties Riley has suffered, she still has a very positive view of life. She confessed that when she lost her brother, she felt lonely and was not sure how to cope. But when her mother passed away, she started to understand the whole grieving process a little better. Even though it was still a heartbreaking loss, she found it slightly easier to deal with. Riley discovered that focusing on her career helped her a lot through the journey of healing. In January 2024, she revealed that apart from her commitments in Hollywood, she had been working on getting Lisa Marie's autobiography ready for publication. The book is expected to be released in October 2024. In a statement to the publisher, Random House, Riley said that few people really got to know who her mom really was other than just being Elvis Presley's daughter. She feels lucky to have had the opportunity to work on her autobiography, even though the journey was a bittersweet one. Riley will also be lending her voice to narrate the audiobook version of the memoir. Riley's efforts and statements reflect a very rare strength of character. She is clearly more than someone who inherited Elvis Presley's estate. She wants to preserve the rich family legacy, and at the same time, she's making her own mark in the entertainment industry. Riley holds her mother in the highest regard and wants to share the real Lisa Marie Presley with the rest of the world. Riley has grown up to be a remarkable woman. Not only has she proven her talents in front of the camera, but she has shown that all the fame and fortune have not gotten into her head. She still holds her family in the highest regard and has nothing but love and respect for her grandmother Priscilla Presley. It is clear that Riley wants to keep working in the entertainment industry. She has made a big name for herself after all, but at the same time, she wants to preserve her family's legacy at Graceland. The place is just too close to her heart. What do you think about Riley and her commitment to her grandfather? Let us know in the comments below. As always, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more such content.